Go Electric here, and I'm happy to be back in our Michigan studio after a very hot week in Arizona. Today is Sunday, October 6, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. Toyota has announced an additional $500 million investment in electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle company Joby Aviation, which will help their efforts towards FAA certification and the commercial production of their electric air taxis. This brings Toyota's total investment in Joby to $894 million since January of 2020. The companies say the funds will be injected in two equal tranches, one this year and one next year. When complete, Toyota will hold approximately 22% of Joby's outstanding shares. Joby's stock price jumped 23% on this announcement. Toyota will contribute its expertise in design and manufacturing, specifically with the supply of key powertrain and actuation components for Joby's aircraft. The aircraft will be built in volume in Dayton, Ohio at their 140-acre International Airport site. They aim to produce 500 units annually. As we previously reported, Joby has received three of five FAA certifications to operate their commercial air taxi service in the U.S. They plan to launch passenger service as early as late 2025, starting in Dubai. Joby is also strategically aligned with Delta Airlines and Uber. This week, Toyota also announced the delay of their first U.S.-produced EV. Their three-row SUV was intended for production at their Kentucky facility. Reports say the company is now targeting the first half of 2026, rather than late 2025, due to design adjustments and slowing EV sales. Their Lexus electric SUVs, which had been slated for North America manufacturing by 2030, has also been scrapped. The plan is now to build it in Japan. Toyota says they remain on track to introduce five to seven all-electric models in the U.S. over the next two years. In EV charging news, network provider EVGO has announced they have received a conditional commitment for a loan guarantee of up to $1.05 billion from the U.S. Department of Energy. The company says this will enable them to install approximately 7,500 new DC fast charging stalls across various states, including Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Texas. If finalized, EVGO expects to complete the deployment of the new stalls by 2030. IANA, the eight automaker consortium for EV charging in North America, has commenced production of their first site, called the Rechargery. Located in Apex, North Carolina, close to their headquarters in Raleigh, North Carolina, the facility plans show 10 covered parking bays with both CCS and NAX charging ports, capable of up to 400 kilowatts. Plans also include a lounge with coffee service, food and beverage, Wi-Fi, and restrooms. The property is slated to feature outdoor facilities with pet-friendly amenities too. IANA plans to deploy 30,000 charging points by 2030. Ford Motor Company announced further EV discounts in the form of a new program called the Ford Power Promise. It can remove a major barrier of EV adoption when it comes to charging an EV. Starting October 1st of 2024, customers who purchase or lease a Ford EV, including the F-150 Lightning, Mustang Mach-E, and E-Transit, will be able to opt for a complimentary 80-amp bi-directional capable Ford Charge Station Pro and standard installation through their partner QMerit, a nationwide network of electricians. The standard installation and permitting credit does not have a price limit, but it must be associated with a dedicated electrical meter attached to the same structure where the charging equipment will be installed. Restrictions may apply based on structural and electrical limitations such as panel upgrades or circuit upgrades past 60 amps, trenching, and wiring runs extended past 80 feet. The installation process will take between three and six weeks and must be completed by June 30th of 2025. Customers who don't opt in for the installation can realize this discount in the form of $2,000 bonus cash. The program also includes 24-7 ongoing support for EV owners with access to a customer service rep via text for charging inquiries. Ford's roadside assistants will now tow discharged Ford EVs to a nearby charging station as well. The program is set to expire January 2nd of 2025, but may be extended as Ford evaluates the program's efficacy. 
Ford is not the first to provide assistance for electric vehicle supply equipment and installation. Chevy offered up to $1,250 for the installation of a home charger when they were selling the Bolt. Subaru gives Solterra customers a $400 credit for installation with Cumerit. Other brands offer complimentary Level 2 hardware or credits, including Nissan, Lucid, and Hyundai Group. Some brands like Rivian periodically offer credits for home chargers and installation as promotional levers. It is wise for buyers to investigate the federal credit for home charging as well. It can sometimes offer the entire cost of the equipment and installation, even if you decide to take advantage of some of these automakers' programs. I'll place a link to information about Ford's Power Promise program along with the federal credit in this video's description if you'd like to learn more. In my eyes, having access to convenient, reliable, and affordable overnight charging is required for EV ownership in order to make the experience more enjoyable than owning an internal combustion engine vehicle. The University of California Davis performed a study which revealed that over 80% of EV buyers end up purchasing another EV next. Of the roughly 20% who went back to gasoline, over 70% did not have access to home or workplace charging. I've personally trained tens of thousands of automotive salespeople. It is safe to say that without a program like this, buyers may not realize the benefits of level two home charging. Our time as EV owners is optimized when we can plug in whenever the vehicle is naturally idle. The goal is to match our dwell time. DC fast charging is most appropriate for long trips. Do you think the Ford Power Promise will be more effective to drive new sales or to improve EV customer retention. Chevrolet has officially begun selling the entry-level trim of their most affordable EV, the Equinox EV. And it's currently the most affordable EV offering over 300 miles of range available in the US. At $34,995 before the federal tax credit, the 1LT trim offers a single motor front wheel drive system outputting 213 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque, an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack providing up to 319 miles of range and 11.5 kilowatt level two charging speeds, along with 150 kilowatt peak DC fast charging. The base trim's affordability can be attributed to items such as a manual adjustable front seat with no heating or cooling, manual lift gate, and no glass roof. GM is starting to gain its stride in the EV race with eight EVs on the market. The Optic and Cadillac Escalade IQ are also scheduled to launch this quarter. In their recent Q3 earnings report, it showed a 60% year-over-year increase of EV sales with 32,095 total deliveries. That figure marks a 46% improvement over the previous quarter. GM says over 50% of their EV buyers are new to their brands. The Equinox EV offers affordability for many drivers who want to go electric without buying a used vehicle. Buyers who qualify for the federal tax credit of $7,500 will pay as little as $27,495. Possible state incentives of up to $4,000 make a $23,495 price tag possible. What are your thoughts on the Equinox EV and Chevy's efforts to become a significant player in the EV space? While we're on the topic of lower priced trim levels, Tesla Cybertruck's premium priced foundation series exclusivity has ended. Standard trim pricing for all wheel drive variants is now available to early reservation holders. The starting price for an all wheel drive dual motor Cybertruck is now $79,990. This week, Tesla reported quarterly figures with 469,796 vehicles produced and 462,890 vehicles delivered. This represents a 9.1% increase in production and a 6.3% increase in deliveries compared to the third quarter of 2023. In Q3, just 22,915 of vehicles were the S, X, and Cybertruck combined. Cybertruck owners in the forums are showing vehicle identification numbers around 40,000. We can deduce that very few Model S and Model X were delivered worldwide. 
Last year, Tesla delivered 1,808,581 vehicles. And as of Q3 2024 numbers, they're sitting at 1,293,656 vehicles delivered. To continue their streak of year-over-year -year growth, they would need to deliver over 514,925 units, which would be about 35,000 more vehicles than the most delivered in a quarter from Tesla ever. Can the Cybertruck deliveries bridge the gap? Does Tesla have a trick up their sleeves to boost Model S and X figures? I will be covering the North American Battery Show this upcoming week. In order to follow that reporting, head on over to the Misco Electric Industry Channel and subscribe. Every year we unearth some exciting industry developments there. Well, that's all for today's episode. If you found value in The Current, I hope you'll consider sharing a link to this episode online. And please join me on other social media platforms like X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and exclusive coverage. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.